Charles, thank you for your time, I appreciate it. Um, the market first, if we're, um, if, depending on who you listen to, the market last year and end of 2013 and early part of this year has, um, has grown by 8 to 13%, again, depending on who you talk to. Where do you see the market going forward to the rest of uh, 2014, I suppose, the early parts of 2015? Well, Sydney was the strongest market because it had the biggest correction to make. Because during the, uh, the GFC and prior to, when the markets were taking off, Sydney didn't. And so it needed to make that correction. That's, that's why it had the biggest lift of all. I think we're back into a steady market right now, and I think our growth right across Australia is going to be a lot lower than people think. There's been talk about a boom for some time. There isn't a boom. There hasn't been a, a boom. There have been certain suburbs that have gone very well, and the clearance rates on a national level have only been in the 80s once in the last entire last 12 months, only once, and that's boom times. And you may have alluded to it in your in the answer to your previous question. Your view about the property bubble? Yeah, look, the market's been sitting in the 60s in clearance rates now for the last eight, nine weeks on the records that I keep, which indicates to me that we're now starting to level out and balance out and, and people are starting to understand that they shouldn't be paying those higher prices that they were paying to secure property. But again, it was only in small pockets and it looked like, and we've had commentators talking about a bubble now every year for the last five years on my records, and I'm still waiting. They're gonna be right one day, but it's always a guess, and it's always when something like this occurs, where there's activity, but the truth is, across the marketplace, there is still a, a tremendous number of properties that are, that are in negative equity yeah. from prior to the GFC. Yeah. Let's move on to foreign investors. They're, they're attracting the attention of the media. What sort of impact are they having on our market? And I guess and you might like to look at the very segments in, uh, in the market. Yeah, the, again, the, the overseas buyers, most of them, are buying new properties because it's easy to access that uh, with, with the FIRB rules. Yeah. But also, they're buying properties in selected price ranges. Quite often, you're not seeing the overseas investors buying properties in the first home buyer's price range. And a lot of people were talking about the fact that it's impacted on first home buyers. They're not. They're, they're buying in, in the six, sevens upwards, in, and they're buying them in key locations, city locations where a first home buyer generally couldn't even get an opportunity to buy in. They are an important part of our marketplace because you can go and put a tax on them, and all you're going to do is raise revenues for the government because it's still not going to stop them from buying. If you had an opportunity to take money out of certain economies in Asia and bring it to a, a safe haven, you'd bring it here. Now, if we push those people away, when we really need them, and there'll come a time when we do, they won't be there. And this is what happened in the Sydney market when the car government slapped an exit tax on for vendors. Yeah. And people started deciding not to buy in New South Wales. And that's why we had the massive correction, in my view, in the last year we had. Because all those people left and they started to slowly come back. And that's why we had this significant price movement. I think if you push those people away, it could be very dangerous for our economy. Fantastic, Charles. Thank you very much for your Thank time. You. I really appreciate it. Thanks, Tim.